Okay, um, so we're gonna just make sure you don't work like me inside the case. Just unbox outside. This is the stock cooler, which we're not gonna use for this build. We are just interested in the CPU. I'm gonna... Where is it gone? Oh, <laughs> my bad. Here's the CPU. It's protected in a plastic case. So I'm gonna just close this, put this away. The stock cooler comes with pre, um, pre, in, so what's this? Pre-applied thermal paste. Um, quite straightforward to install. There's lots of YouTube videos that should show you how to install this one. But today we're doing an aftermarket cooler. Cooler. Okay. So with the that's the AMD FX logo. I'm gonna insert that later on the case. Right. With the AMD CPUs, the pins are at the back of the CPU. And with the Intel, it's different, the pins are actually inside. So these are quite delicate. Be careful when you do open them. Make sure you open them. Don't open them this way, open them that way. And try not to touch the pins inside. Okay, I'm gonna open them. And be very careful, pick from the sides. Okay, turn them around, make sure you don't drop them. Right. If you can see, there's a small arrow. On the bottom left, mm -hmm. the golden arrow. Can you see? These other corners don't have it. Now, inside the case, if you come over, the arrow, you have to align the arrow to the arrow of the case, which is here. Okay? And these um, CPUs, they are ZIF. So they are zero insertion force. I'll, I'll demonstrate. So first you have to just push down this arm and put it to the side and it opens um, the bracket. And like I said, the arrow, you must align to the arrow on the bracket. Sorry, on where the CPU is going to go. So you gently just place it. You should not insert any force and it should go in without you having to push in. If you're having to push in, you may have dent one of the pins and this is going to be a problem. So these are ZIF, zero insertion force. You give it a little wiggle to make sure it's in place and you push the arm down and it clicks into place and voila, done, sorted. Okay, so next step, we're going to apply some thermal paste on it. However, before I do this, I'm now going to install the brackets for the CPU cooler. So let's move on to the CPU cooler. Okay. Put this inside for a minute. Right. Now, the Evo Cooler Master CPU cooler. Um, actually, we should check whether... I never checked whether the height is going to be adequate for this case. Hopefully, it should be. Now, it's just about, as you can see, just about level. I think any... A few millimeters higher, we would have a problem. Actually, does it go in? Oh, I think we might have a problem here. We might have a problem here, guys. Let me see if the side panel is going to close. Okay, I'm going to be happy. We just come over and uh, just remove this. Oh, I dropped inside. Hold on a minute. There you go. If you can see, there's hardly any room left for any higher of a CPU cooler, and we would not be able to fit this. So this is one of the reasons why I said. To always go with a site which actually gives you compatibility in terms of issues to do with height and fittings right anyway so we're gonna work on this first now we have just a bit of planning so the CPU cooler is actually going to be going on this side so the cooler master logo here okay um, if you can see that's the right side the fan is going to be blowing air onto it okay to cool it so we need to first to remove this fan to be able to inst install this uh, cooler. However, before I do this, I'm actually going to put the brackets on 
the board. And to do this, I'm going to actually show you both ways. So, right, um, first of all, from there's a back plate that came, which looks like this. And there's a bit of a darker texture on one side. For the AMD, it's actually installed. Um, where is it? I can go all the way there. And then move it this way. Okay, this way. Okay, sorry. I put this the wrong side up. Right. This opening is quite handy to be able to insert uh, CPU coolers even after insertion of the motherboard. So the for the AMD, we're going to. The funny darker side is going to be against the back plate. For Intel, I think usually you have to insert it this way. But anyway, we're going to. We're going to grab four of these screw slash standoffs, which is going to be screwed from the other side into onto these back plates. So let's try to do that. I'm going to have to do this standing. I think this way should be fine. <clears throat> right. You can see I've inserted the first standoff screw and to hold it in place as such and these come with nuts to be able to secure from this side however I'm going to put another adjacent um, standoff screw so it holds it in place there we go put it in to do. There we go. Right. So let me get one of the nuts and is one side flat? Is it both the same? Okay. You can hand tighten this for now. These coolers come with a separate gadget to tighten the rest. Okay, so one, two, now I'm going to put the other two. There you go. And the last one. There we go, and the nuts, almost there, sorry guys, and it's a bit of a pain. Right, my advice for first time gamers, if you're not going to overclock, don't go for an aftermarket cooler. I have a stock cooler on uh, an APU, AMD A6, uh, A8, sorry, 6500. I can barely hear it, and because I don't game, I don't game a lot, I just try a couple of games, um, and the fan's quite quiet, so this is really for you know those who want to do overclocking. Okay, um, you have a gadget that came with the cooler, um, it's kind of a tightening nut, so you can use it to hand tight. And use your screwdriver. Don't, not too much force. As soon as, as, soon as uh, you get resistance, just stop. And remember, diagonal tightening always. There we go. Let's go in deeper. Let's check in. Fine. That's fine. There we go, and the back plate's done. This to the side. Okay, so moving on. We're down to the right side again. Put these thumb screws back in so I don't lose them. Another right, oops, putting the wrong hole. 
Oops, it happens. That's what she said. Okay, wait. Okay, guys, now uh, you can see these standoffs. And these are what's going to retain the rest of the bracket with these scissor jiggy muggy. There is a little instruction manual that came with it. And for the scissors one, there is a way that you, you should put it. There's only one right and two wrong ways. Um, and um, that seems to be the right way. A, A is the right way. Yeah. So, as you can see, this is going to mount on there, but it's going to be inside the CPU. So, anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this fan off, okay? And then I'll get back to you. Okay. Okay, um, to remove this fan, you just simply click on the side. There you go. And it pops off. Put it to the side. Now, like I said earlier, this scissor bracket, there's a small latch inside, and if you can see it, this screw down here, the middle screw, is going to land nicely in there. And uh, we're going to insert it this way. However, before I do this, I'm going to insert, sorry, apply some thermal paste. So let's take this off again. Um, the cooler that came with a small syringe, master cooler master thermal paste. I would presume this is a good quality one. I've got a, a normal one, uh, which probably isn't good for um, cool for aftermarket coolers. So, hmm? okay, right. So um, to apply to apply thermal paste, so many people do so many different kind of things. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm not that obsessed with it. So uh, in AMD uh, CPU, usually I would just apply a small P amount in the middle, right in the middle. How much you want to do, that's referred to those who are more expert than me. So small P amount, about this much. And remember guys, less is more. Less is more, always. Okay, right. So, moment of truth, remember, um, there is a plastic you need to take off at the bottom where the uh, CPU is going to meet the cooler. And uh, I don't believe we need to put thermal paste on this one. We're going to put thermal paste here. I may be wrong. Someone correct me. And we're going to make sure the Cooler Master logo, you can read it from looking down, okay, on this way. And uh, let me insert that funny looking thing. Oh, by the way, I forgot to show you. There's actually, um, there's, there's actually three settings on these screws. So for the AMD AM3 Plus, you need to put it in the middle setting. Okay, so I'm going to insert it and make sure the screws are aligned to the standoffs. Just place it on top of the CPU first. It shouldn't go anywhere. Now you can adjust it and take one of your screwdrivers. And as usual, we do the opposing sides gently. Just screw it a little bit first, just so you can adjust on the other side. Side. And if you have placed the correct setting in the middle of the it should go in. Right, now that I've kind of secured it, I'm gonna start tightening on the opposing sides first. Don't go all the way first. Just loosely. Okay, that's done. That's done. Run to the opposing side. There we go. Last one. Again, not too tight. 
just as much as the, the resistance will stop you from going in further. There we go. And uh, remember to pop the fan back in. Uh, try to see where the fan pin header is, so we're going to have to insert it later. So you could actually adjust the fan. Uh, where's the four? This is the four pin header. I'm looking for the four pin header on the motherboard. So we're going to have to insert it later. Oh, it's at the back there. So this way is fine because we're going to be able to access it, so that's fine. I'm just going to pop that back in. On the one side first. And on the other side. Be gentle. You should click in, and there we have it. So, the fan is inserted, and remember to just if you can see, there's a pin at the back for the CPU fan. You want to plug this in, it's four pin. It's this way. There we go, and we're done. We're gonna have to do some cable management with this later. Right, et voila, aftermarket CPU cooler done. This was my first time, by the way, so not too bad a job. Okay, see you in a few seconds. Okay, guys, um, I've actually swapped the direction of the um, fan. So the cord earlier, it was done this way, but I wanted to put it this way, so it kind of hides away the back here rather than here so I don't have to do much cable management now um, slight miscalculation um, as you can see this cooler is actually quite big and it's just over the first RAM slot where I need to put my memory stick I can't actually insert it in this first RAM slot here so I'm hoping um, I'm gonna be able to put it in the next slot now if you see this color coordination the every other uh, slot is a different color so if you do put in the first one you have to put the other pair in the th third one, not the next one to it. So in this case, I'm going to put it in the black one, which is the RAM number, I think it's called DIM1. So this is DIM0, 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to put it in DIM1 and 3, the color code name. I'm hoping it works. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to basically take this off and put the RAM sticks in on the blue before I put this cooler back on. Let's hope it works. Okay. So anyway, um, the RAM slot has a latch has a gap and if there's a latch here it will only go in one way not the other way so make sure you're aligning the latch with a little notch and right straight in these need to be open on both sides and what you do is just apply pressure once it's in on both sides and you push down gently until it clicks there we go that's ram and the second stick, same thing. We're going to put it in the black slot on the right position. Make sure the tabs are open. Slide it in. Once it's in, make sure it's not going anywhere. And just push down gently. And it clicks by itself. And there you go. That's memory done. Okay, see you for the next part.